Shalom, 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 Israel. Right? First, giving all honor and glory to the Mosiah Hawa, Bahashim Yahusha, for this truth. Right? Going, and I'm going off the spirit. Right? A quick lesson. And, hey, it's titled, hey, you should be going hard in this truth like it's your last day in this truth. Because ultimately, hey, this can't, hey, if you slothful, right? If you lunging around, if you're not going hard as you should be going, hey, this could be your last day in the truth. And that's a scary sight, right? Once you out of this truth, man, hey, you out of this truth. Now you bugged out. Now you can't get salvation, right? Now you thinking, you know, Esau is the Arabs, right? Now you thinking the history outdates the Bible, looking at ancient civilizations. Now you're looking at ancient alien channels, right? Well, saying, oh, the Egyptians, they, they didn't really have slaves, right? Now you're thinking the UFOs, the chariots, gave him some damn technology to build. Hey, it's madness. Hey, but you could be like that if you're wandering around in the truth, man. If you're not going as hard as you can. Right? Let's kick it off with the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15. All right. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would know that thou were cold or hot. Right? So the Lord ultimately, the Lord know your works, man. He know what you're doing behind closed doors. Right? His eyes is everywhere. Right? Hey, let me get a precept on that real quick. Showing you that, hey, first and foremost, Hey, the angels is watching you right now. They taking down everything you doing. Let me get that in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 1. Right? It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 1. It says, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and a point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their hearts and upon the horns of your altars, right? So, hey, all the sins, all the works that you're doing, man, is written upon the table of iron, right? You got angels all around you, literally. They sitting back, they saying, okay, you know, Slovakia. I had to get this real quick precept, Slovakia, right? You got angels, right? They looking at you. They said, hmm, is this brother going to eat that pork sandwich? You know, you kind of in the refrigerator looking at it, right? Then you go ahead and, and then you sin. As soon as you eat that, they like, the angel's kind of like this, you know. They writing stuff down. They watch you all the time, man. And they taking down every note that you're doing, right? Now, let's go to the book of Proverbs, the classic chapter 15, verse 3. Because not only the angels taking down accounts what you're doing, Hey, the Lord is seeing you. I don't think, well, I don't know why people think the Lord is not seeing them. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. It says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So the, hey, the, the Lord, the eyes of the Lord, hey, amen, they in every single place, man. Right? Beholding the good and the evil. So don't think you, don't think you fooling the word, the, uh, the Lord, man. Because he's looking dead at you. Right? Let me get another precept. Then we can go back to Revelation 13, 3 and 15. <clears throat> Let's go to the book of um, Syrac, chapter uh, 23, verse 19. Book of Syrac, 23 and 19. This little book. Of Syrac chapter 23 verse 19 says such as a such a man only fear the eyes of men right some people hey you know they family members they cut in they'll kind of you know hurry up and stop doing what they doing because they fear the eyes of men but what and know if that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun beholding all the ways of men and considering the secret parts right so the eyes of the Lord, you know, you kind of look at the sun when you get up in the morning, you kind of covering up your eye and the Lord's eyes is 10 times brighter than that. 
right? He beholding the good and the evil, right? And considering all the ways of men and their secret parts. So best believe that the Lord seeing you, man. So, you know, brothers, are you watching this video? You not you feel like you're not going as hard as you can? That's because you need to go more harder, right? Including myself, right? I should be going, I should be pushing over 100%, right? Let's go back to that Revelation 315. <clears throat> so the Lord seeing your works, he's seeing if you cold, he's seeing if you cold, if you not, if you lukewarm, right? He see if you're not doing, living up to your potential. And he's seeing the times when you're on fire in this truth. Right? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15. It says, I know thy works, that thou art cold nor hot. I know that thou art cold or hot. So because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, right? you in the middle. you kind of in the middle. It says, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, I have need of nothing, and knowing not that thou art rich, and miserable, and a poor, and blind, and naked. Right? I'm going to stop. I'm going to rest right there. So the point is, hey, if you're not cold, right, and you're not high, you kind of in the middle, and the Lord going to spit you, going to literally spit you out of his mouth, man. He's going to say no, right? Because you're not 100% in. You have stepping. You got one foot in, and you got one foot out. And you can't do that with the Lord. Right? And you got to be fully in his truth. Right? If you're not fully in his truth, I don't, you, you could, hey, you might not make it. Right? So you got to treat this truth like it's your last day in it. Right? And get a precept in the book of Proverbs. Right, and you, and you know, if this is your last day in something, if you if if you if you is your last day in this truth, right? Hey man, you'll probably be in a word all day. You'll probably be trying to read the most, right? Studying the most, cause it's your last day in the truth, right? If the Lord said, "Hey, today your last day in the truth," whatever you do to the tape determines whether you make it or not. Hey, brothers will probably be reading all day. They wouldn't eat. They wouldn't watch TV. They wouldn't be watching them YouTube videos, right? They wouldn't be um, lounging around, right? Looking at just, man, just, just foolishness. They will always be in his word. And that's how you originally post to, right? This is the book of Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. It says, boast not thyself to, of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Right, so the Lord said, don't boast yourself for tomorrow. You got a brother say, oh, I'm going to just, man, I'm going to just read tomorrow, man. I don't really feel like reading right now. You know, brother's talking about, I don't want to study. I'm going to just study tomorrow, right? Hey, but you got to study today because you you may not know what a day made me forth, right? Let's link that up with the book of Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. Let's get a precept in there. Right? Hey, don't be like that. Always, hey, make sure you always have time for the Lord, right? Because the Lord got time for you, man. He had time to deal with you when you was, man, when you was going the hell off, right? When you was being a weed smoker, right? A whoremonger, right? When you was down up partying all night with little Kiki from the block, right? Hey, the Lord was patient with you, man. Right? He didn't give up. You know, he had, he made time for you. For how, so how dare you say, hey, I'm going to do this tomorrow on the Lord? Right? You, you got some, hey, this this what I used to do when I was, um even when I was in the truth, man. I used to just wake up and go straight on my phone. Hey, I should have been ashamed of myself. The first thing you're supposed to do when you wake up is give all honor and glory to the Most High for waking you up. Right? That's like you falling in a pit, in a ditch, right? And somebody help you out and you don't say thank you. And they just literally helped you out. You got to say, all right, thank you, brother. Right? And the Lord woke you up, and you're not even going to thank him for that? Hey, you got to kind of check your spirit in this thing. It's the book of, um, um, well, actually, I'm going to start at this. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 4. It says, for to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. 
right? Now, you might be like, what does that mean? It says a living dog is better than a dead lion. Now, a lion is stronger than a dog, but the lion is dead, but the dog is still li living, right? For example, you might have a brother, he come in his truth, and he, max, he wax real mighty. He might know all the breakdowns, all the precepts, right? Things of that nature, right? But he, um, but he's dead. He's out the truth, right? Then you got a dog, which is a weaker animal than a lion, right? It's still, you know, even though it's not as much on the level as the lion was, it's still, it's still living because it's still in its truth, right? So that's what, that's what Solomon was saying when he said a, a, a dead lion. I mean, a living dog is better than a dead lion. So lock you. At the um, it's instant, right? So that's what he meant by uh, uh, um. A living dog, a living dog is better than a dead lion. The, even though the lion is a might is mighty, hey, it's not living, right? We we gonna jump down to verse ten, right? It says, whatsoever thy hand find it to do, do. Do it with thy might, right? Do it mean and do it with all you got, man, right? Go hard, right? Go all in, or don't, hey, just don't do it. It says, do it thought thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in a grave whether thou goest, right? Because in a grave, you can't praise the Lord, man. You can't keep the commandments in a grave because you're dead. You're not living. Right, so that's what it meant, right? In verse four, when it says a living a, a living dog is better than a dead lion, right? Because when you're in the grave, you can't keep the feast days, right? You can't be reading that extra chapter you was doing, you were supposed to. You can't be studying on precepts how you were supposed to, because you're in the grave, you dead, right? We gonna actually um stay in this chapter. Just the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 12. It says, For man also knoweth not his time. Right? Man don't know his time. Man don't know when he gonna leave this earth. Right? It says, As the fishes that are taken in an evil net. Right? You know, you kind of going fishing. Right? Put yourself in a uh, life of them fishes, man. They just swimming around. Right? You that fisherman, you just... You don't, you get that fish. And a fish down, the, and a fish is swimming around. All of a sudden, boom, they just plucked up. It says, As the birds are caught in an evil snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falls sudden upon, suddenly upon. Right? So you never know when something is going to happen to you. Lord, Lord willing, some don't happen to you, brothers and sisters, but. If you're not on fire in this truth and you lukewarm, hey, best believe stuff could happen, right? Because you, you're you not all in for the Lord. Therefore, the Lord is not going to be all in for you, right? So, hey, you never know when you're going to get plucked up, right? Like a bird get trapped in a snare. A bird don't know when it's going to get trapped in a snare. So, so do the um, Salakia. It says, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it fallen upon them suddenly. So you never know what an evil time gonna fall upon you suddenly. You never know when you're not gonna be in this truth anymore, right? And brothers say, well, in my spirit is strong enough, you know. You go around a bunch of brothers that smoke weed, you say, hey, I can handle this. And hey, let's see if you can handle it. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's stay in the book of Ecclesiastes 8 and 8. It says, there is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither have he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. And neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Right? So no man has power over his own spirit. Right? So you go around, you know, little Kiki and them down the block. And they all smoking weed. And you gonna want to smoke weed. Right? That's why you got to be with like-minded people. And your mind got to be right. According to the scriptures. So hey, you should hey brother should be treating the truth like that. This day last day in the truth. Cause you never know. Hey, best believe if you lukewarm in this truth, hey, the Lord can snatch you out anytime and give your talent to the next man. Right? Like I say in the book of Matthew. 
All right, let me get another precept on that. Um, God, let me get a, what's that, a book of Job? So like you, what's this? It says, um, oh, my righteous. So like you, Israel. So I don't know what his priest up. Um. Twenty-seven. Kind, kind, kind. It's the book of Job, chapter 27, verse 6. It says, My righteousness I hold fast. I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me as long as I live. All right, so when you got this truth, right? You guys, you know you what Ezra, like the precepts, the breakdowns. And you got to hold tight on to that, right? Just like you will hold tight on to your daughter, man, and your woman. Because these scriptures, wisdom is personified as a woman, right? So you got to hold fast on to that, man, and don't let go. Job just said, hey, I hold my righteousness. I hold fast. Right? You can't let this truth slip away. Because, hey, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Right? You might be like, man, I don't need to, that Israelite stuff, man. I mean, hey, the Lord just have mercy on me. Next thing you know, you utter the truth. Right? The Lord give your talent to another brother. Right? That didn't know nothing about this truth. Now he's not taking this truth for granted. Now he on fire every day, right? He he let up, man. He going hard for you. How about you, man? shot? That's where you got. That's where you got to be. And you know it's gonna take time. It's not gonna be an overnight process. But make sure you making progress. Don't keep mis making the same mistakes, man. Right? Before I get another piece up on that, let me get a uh, let me get a piece up on you know not making the same mistakes because you're not progressing. If you and you also being if you out there on the highways and byways and you telling somebody not to do it and you do it anyway, and you will be a hypocrite, man. Right? You will be a straight up hypocrite. Real quick, let me get a precept from that. And the book is I rap. To the spirit. This is the book of Sirach, chapter one, verse twenty-nine. It says, be not a hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed what thou speakest, right? So don't be like Esau because Esau is the biggest hypocrite ever, right? He says, in God we trust, yet you could be a transgender, right? So don't be like Esau, right? Don't be teaching perverse things. If you say something, hey, you better be about it. Just like Abraham, man, right? Hey, he was about it, man, in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, right? The Lord told him, to uh, offer up his son Isaac. Hey, he didn't say nothing, man. He just did it. That's how you got to be, man. All right? It's the book. What I wanted. Proverbs 26 and 11. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. Going into not making the same mistakes. It says, as a dog returned to his vomit, so does a fool return to his folly. Right? So as a dog returned to his vomit, so does a fool return back to his wickedness, man? Right? You know, you say, hey, I'm, hey, I'm done smoking weed, man. And then you out there on the highways and byways, you say, hey, brother, hey, you know, no smoking weed. But yeah, you go right home and you go light up that blunt, man. And you will be a hypocrite. And you will be a fool. Right? You wouldn't be a man of understanding. You will be a fool. Right? So, hey, brothers got to start making changes. Right, write down a list of the changes you gotta make. There's nothing wrong with writing down a list. Right, getting your goals together. There's nothing wrong with doing that, and it's true. Because from day to day, you gotta put off that old man before the Lord come back. And you didn't, day to day, you ain't put off that old man. Now you destroyed in the Lord's vengeance. You don't wanna be that man that destroy, that get destroyed when the Lord come back. You wanna be that man that get beamed up in that chariot, right, when the Lord come back. So, um, let me get another, let me get a precept on, uh, holding fast to your righteousness. All right. Actually, real quick, let me go, let me link that up. 
with the book of us uh, second peter chapter 2 verse 19 it says why they promised them liberty they themselves are servants of corruption right then there's some same people that's on the highways and byways teaching yeah yet they doing the same thing they telling somebody not to do it says for of whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage for if after they escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, and the latter end is worse than the beginning. Right. So you you are you better off, you know, just not being in this truth at all than to be in this truth, right? Be a hypocrite in this truth, man. It says, For it have been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness. Right, exactly what I just said. It says, then, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Right, it's better for you to not have just, you should have just never came in the truth. Right, if you're going to be in the truth, and you're going to tell people, hey, brother, don't mess with, don't commit adultery, don't mess with different women. Right, hey, brother, don't be looking at them nasty sites right online. Right, brother, don't be smoking weed. Don't be a whore monkey. Don't break the Sabbath, brother. But yet you turn around and do it, right? You you turn around and break the trans uh, the commandments of the Lord, and you better not you better off just not being in the truth. That's what it's saying. It says, but it, it's happened to them according to the true proverb, right? The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her own hollowing in the my in the mire, right? So it's quoting, right? In second in second Peter two and, and um. 22 is quoting Proverbs 26 and 11, right? And on a physical level, you could look this up, right? Or if people have dogs out there, when a dog throw up, it's go it go eventually goes back to his vomit, right? This is a true proverb, right? This is a wise saying, right? So you will be a fool to return back to your foolishness, man. And the Lord, hey, don't play with the Lord, man, right? You got to get that Caesar Porzier spirit. Caesar Borgia spirit out your mind and put in Hamashiach uh, Yahweh shot, man. Right? That austere man. Like it say in the book of Luke 19 and 21. Right? Hey, hey the Lord nothing to play with, man. Right? The Lord is nothing to play with. Right? Hamashiach Yahweh shot is nothing to play with. How much more for the Heavenly Father, Yahweh? Are you, are you walking on eggshells? Right? You playing with fire, man. Right. So um let's get a precept and a book of Psalms. And grab a few more precepts. It's the book of Psalms, chapter fifty one, verse eleven. It says, Um Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Right. So brothers gotta be a brother should be throwing up slothfulness prayers, right? If you slothful in this thing, right? You should be throwing up slothfulness prayers. Lord, take the spirit of uh, slothfulness off of me, man, right? A hey, David just said, cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Like we just read in a, um, did we read that in Revelation 3 or 15? Well, Revelation 2 and 5 says that, right? Because the Lord could take his Holy Spirit from you. Next thing you know, you're not in this truth because you're not going hard enough. On a physical level, let's say you're on a basketball team, right? And you got potential, right? You got five-star potential. The Lord brought you in it. Your coach brought you in this thing, right? Right? The court, the Lord is the example for the coach, right? So the Lord is the coach in this example, right? He bring you on a basketball team. You got potential, right? But you in practice, you know, you have stepping in practice. And then when you get in the games, you just kind of doing your own thing. You're not showing up to practice, right? Hey, the Lord, hey, the coach not going to play you, man. The coach going to sit you out. Eventually, he going to tell you, hey, you're not on the team no more. Hey, that's what the Lord is going to do when you're not going all out in the truth. He's going to tell you, hey, you're not in the truth no more. You don't deserve to be in the truth. All right. So, brothers and sisters, hey, check your spirits, man. And examine yourself daily, whether you be in the faith, right? If you don't examine yourself, how do you know that Hamashiach Yahweh is in you? Do the spirit, right? So if you, you know, you kind of feel yourself, you're not doing enough, 
you know, your spirit telling you you could do more. Hey, that's your spirit telling you you could do more in this thing. Right? So, uh, right with that, you know, I'm going to give a strong shallow one. Right, brothers and sisters, stay on fire in these last days. Right? Wait, real quick, let me get up one last precept in the book of Revelation. Classic. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 5. I'm going to start at 4. It says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, and whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I remove thy candlestick out of thy place, except thou repent. Right? Basically saying, if you're not doing the first works, if you're not keeping these laws, that's just commandments, right? And the Lord going to come in, and he's going to remove that spirit from off you. Right? He's going to he gonna give it to the next brother that want to do that. Right? So, you know, hey, we in the last days, right? Make sure y'all stand on fire, praying fast and studying, right? On fire in this thing and doing the first works of the Lord, right? Walking in the path of our forefathers. All right, let me get a, let me get that real quick. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter six, verse 16. It says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest from your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Right? So you got to walk in the ways of King David, right? King Solomon, the righteous forefathers, right? That kept the commandments, right? Hey, for you aquas out there, you know, walk in the righteous ways of your foremothers, right? Esther. Hey, that's a fire book, man. Right, the book of Esther, you know, reverence your husbands, right? Children, obeying your, your parents, man. Right, hey, walking in the paths of our forefathers, our righteous forefathers. Right, so with that, I'm going to give a um, strong shallow bomb, right? Hey, treat this truth like it's your last day in it. Brother Tazama, with that, I'm going to give you a strong shallow bomb, shallow bomb.